Hello and welcome back to the course on Introduction to Solid State Physics. Uh, in the last lecture, we had learned about the phonon dispersion relation for a one dimensional monoatomic chain, and this is how the dispersion curve looks like. And at very low frequency or at very higher wavelengths, we can see the continuum model, and also we can see that this dispersion relation is translationally symmetric as well as it is having mirror symmetry and using this uh, we had also obtained the phase velocity and the group velocity of the elastic waves traveling inside the one dimensional monoatomic solid and now in today's class we can go for the diatomic uh, system in which again we are considering a one dimensional chain and there are two kinds of atoms here capital M and small m and we can see that now the periodicity of the lattice is no more a it is now 2a so the periodicity of the lattice now is changed from a to 2a so this mass m the capital M is heavier than the mass small m and they are connected through the same bond having the spin constant k now we can little bit reformulate our <coughs> system let us call the even numbered atoms let us assume that they are having the higher mass and the odd number atoms are having the lower mass so for example here in this case so here if there is a even number atom then it is surrounded by two odd numbered atom so a capital mass m is surrounded by two small mass m and but uh, in both of them the uh, corresponding spin constant is k and the same nomenclature applies here un is the displacement from the equilibrium position for the nth atom the same thing whatever we had done in our last lecture so now let us uh, straight away we can write down the corresponding equation of motion so let us first focus on the even numbered atom denoted by 2n so we are having the mass capital m which is the heavier mass and 2n represents the even numbered atom so for the 2nth atom we can write the corresponding equation of motion as we had done in our last lecture so that is capital m d square un by dt square is equal to k into u 2n plus 1 minus 2 u 2n plus u 2n minus 1 in this case 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1 are the corresponding neighbors of the 2nth atom and we should remember that this 2n plus 1 and this 2n minus 1th atom are having the masses small m whereas the 2nth atom is having the mass capital M so little bit there is a change in the equation of motion in terms of the mass similarly we can write the corresponding equation of motion for the atoms with mass small m that is the lighter mass and they are situated at the 2 minus first position 2n minus 1 position so this is an odd number and for this we can similarly write the corresponding equation of motion it will be small m so sorry for the mistake here it is small m times d square u 2n minus 1 by d2 square will be equal to k into u 2n minus 2 u n u 2n minus 1 plus u 2n minus 2 so here this 2n minus 1 th atom is having a mass small m and it is surrounded by two atoms which are even numbered that's why they are having the mass capital M <coughs> so these are the two equation of motion one for the capital M and one for the small m now we can assume the corresponding traveling wave solution to these two uh, equation of motion for the even numbered atom displacement this is the way we can write the corresponding equation of uh, from the equation of motion this is the traveling wave solution you can write here you should recall that the 
equilibrium position x and 0 if you recall in the last class we had written it as n a so whenever we are having the 2 n at atom so that means x 2 n 0 will be equal to 2 n a so e to the power i x n 0 times q and in the place of x n 0 in this case it is x 2 n 0 and we have written 2 n a this is how this factor 2 n a times q comes here similarly for the 2 n minus 1 th atom we have to write x 2 n minus 1 at equilibrium position is equal to 2 n minus 1 into a so here in the place of <coughs> 2n it is replaced with 2n minus 1 times q a minus omega t and what is the next step next step is to put the solutions back into the equation of motion and when we do that we can get a set of homogeneous equation of this form that is 2k minus omega square m into a minus 2k into cos q a times b is equal to 0 similarly minus 2k cos q a into a plus 2k minus omega square m into b is equal to 0 so now we are having a set of homogeneous equation and again in this case this will be small m not capital m sorry for the typographical mistake so it will be since it is for the second uh, equation that is let us go back here so this is the for the lighter atom it will be small m <coughs> so this is how the two sets of equation looks like and these are a set of homogeneous equations with the unknown coefficients a b which are yet to be found out so this kind of unknown uh, homogeneous equation this homogeneous equation uh, has got any kind of non trivial solution the trivial solution is that a and b are zero but uh, let us look for the non trivial solution and that exists if and only if the corresponding determinant of this coefficients will be zero so here this is small m so if this term is zero then the associated non trivial solution will exist and from this determinant we can find out the determinant of this and we can obtain a quadratic equation in omega square this can be written as omega square is equal to k into 1 by m plus 1 by small m plus minus k into 1 by capital m plus 1 by small m whole square minus 4 sine square q a by capital m into small m so always we have to remember that the second equation involves small m for the lighter atom and the first equation involved capital M which is for the heavier atom and both the atoms are connected with each other through a spring constant k and this is what we have obtained the solution for omega square this we can get it by finding out the determinant of this and then solving in terms of omega square and this is what is the required phonon dispersion relation so phonon dispersion relation basically what you have to find out we have to find out the relation between omega and q on the left hand side you are having omega on the right hand side you are having q and this decides the phonon dispersion relation for a diatomic system which is in the form of a one dimensional chain so the diatomic system contains this capital m and small m is the respective masses of the two atoms now the next task will be to plot this omega as a function of q and here we can see there is one plus minus sign right so this plus minus sign will result in two different branches in the phonon dispersion curve one is for the higher frequency and another one is for the lower frequency whenever it is plus we will get a higher frequency branch whenever it is minus we will get a lower frequency branch and the higher frequency branch 
this is what you can see this is the higher frequency branch and this is the lower frequency branch the higher frequency branch is called as the optical branch and the lower frequency branch is called as the acoustic branch this is because when q tends to zero so here you can see omega happens to be it is proportional to q and no dispersion takes place and it behaves like a sound wave inside the solid that's why it is also called as the acoustic branch whereas for this second branch for the high frequency branch here you can see as q tends to zero the frequency lies in the near ir region or in the optical region that's why it is called as the optical branch and in this uh, previous equation if you put q to be equal to zero you can obtain these two things and the corresponding frequency at this point when q equal to zero the highest frequency at this point we can get it to be root over of 2k 1 by capital m plus 1 by small m and at pi by 2a which is the zone boundary remember you are plotting it in the first billion zone which is extending from minus pi by 2a to plus pi by 2a because the lattice parameter or the periodicity in, in, the, in the case of diatomic system is 2a not a so we have to plot the associated phonon dispersion curve between minus pi by 2a to plus pi by 2a so here you can see when it is at the boundary of this first billion zone this high frequency is root over of 2k by small m and the low frequency is root over of 2k by capital m so there are three important points here one is at q equal to zero the highest frequency is root over of 2k into 1 by capital m plus 1 by small m and at the boundary that means when either pi by 2a or minus pi by 2a when the value of q is either plus pi by 2a or minus pi by 2a these are the corresponding frequencies that is root over of 2k by small m and root over of 2k by capital m and you can see when m is very very large very large compared to small m then this difference between these two branches will keep on increasing so because of this particular factor right and this particular region is the forbidden region where there are uh, no states no vibrational states exist in this region and that's why this kind of uh, diatomic system can also be used as a band pass mechanical filter so that means it will allow the frequency only in this band rest of the frequencies will be filtered out that is what is the meaning of the mechanical band pass filter whereas the one the monoatomic one dimensional chain can act as a low pass filter so it will allow frequency below certain cutoff level above that all the frequencies will be blocked so it is allowing frequency in a particular band whereas the uh, monoatomic system is allowing frequency below a certain cutoff limit that is omega max so this is all about the phonon dispersion relation uh, typically we took two examples one that of a monoatomic uh, one dimensional chain in the diatomic system uh, and for monoatomic system there was no uh, such kind of forbidden frequency region uh, whereas diatomic system you can clearly see a uh, splitting of these branches frequency branches into the optical and the acoustic groups and as the as the mass difference between the two as, uh, two atoms keeps on increasing the difference will also be more and more so this is all about the lattice uh, dynamics module from the next class uh, the next lecture we'll be discussing about the electronic structure of the solid till now we have discussed the free electron theory and the crystal uh, little bit about the crystal systems and then about the lattice dynamics in the next lecture, we'll be coming to know about the electronic structure of a solid. Thank you.